What's up guys, we're back with the Grub Worm 2022 updates. In this video, we're gonna be talking about the wishbone setup. Now, we're gonna be using the Hammer Concepts and Designs wishbone uh, kit that he just came out with. It is a really beefy wishbone setup. It uses an inch and three eighths, 70, 75 slider. It's got Delrin bushings where you don't have to use grease. And I'll go over all them details in a minute. But right now, I'm gonna uh, show you under Grub Worm, talk to you about how we're gonna tie it in and uh, show you the rear and all that stuff for those just coming in to the video now. So whenever we did the setup, the 25.5 chassis back, I guess it's been a couple years ago, maybe three years ago close to it, we did a big bar across the frame rails here to tie the C-pillars into right behind where the trunk kind of goes up. And I think, I think the C-pillars actually tie to a bar in the trunk and then you've got other bars that go down from that connection, that mid connection down to this bar. Either way, it's tied in to the cage itself, tied into the frame rail here, plated, and then it's tied back to the parachute mount here, which is also still bolted to the end of the frame here. So it's a big, strong square. Well, this is convenient for us, <coughs> excuse me, because we're gonna tie the wishbone right into this bar and it's gonna work out perfectly. You notice we've got the sheet metal off right now. Now the sheet metal, we've got it laid over here. That was on the rear of the car kind of the aerodynamics that uh, Jared over at the anal barn, they call it, done on this thing. All that's going to stay underneath here. We've just got the rivets taken out now so we can kind of mock everything up. But the only part that's not going to go back in is obviously the top part that goes up to here. And that's just because the wishbone's going to have to float. Now, a lot of you uh, remember from the previous video, some wires got crossed whenever this rear end was ordered and the anti-roll bar wouldn't fit. We did offset billet brackets, had those machined. So that would still work out. And then for some reason, the panhard bar bracket still got put on this rear, which obviously we're doing away with this. This is pretty convenient though, because it helps us locate the rear side to side in the middle where it needs to be. And then we can kind of just leave it there and it'll hold it there while we mock up. Plus it allowed Jonathan to uh, put the rear in the car previous to bringing it down here and get the old one out and keep it up there at the shop. But the reason you switch to wishbone when you get really fast, this rear end design, suspension design, when that rear travels up and down, it swings side to side. When you get extended as far as it is right now, any of you guys ever jack up your F bodies and uh, maybe switch the rear wheels or something, and then uh, your tire is into your bump stop whenever you jack the car up, and then when you let the car down, everything's straight again. That's because your rear end travels at a, at a side to side motion when it, whenever it gets really far down. It will actually move, this bar will allow it to swing to one side. And that's just the design of the suspension. But whenever you have a race car like this and you're trying to get it to separate like a dirt track car coming out of a curve, you don't want that rear end to get that sideways because then you're risking getting the tire into the inside of the suspension. You're risking the car trying to drive a different direction because the rear end is trying to go out one side of it. So you just want to get rid of that and go with the wishbone. Because wishbone, you set the rear end in the middle, it travels straight up and down. There's no side to side, there's none of that to worry about. You set what it is and that's what it is. So, that's what Grub Worm is gonna get. So let's go check out the wishbone. 
So here we have the wishbone all welded up. Whenever I got here this evening, they were pretty much done with it as far as welding it up and stuff. You can see these are the Dalrin bushings. Nice, hard, slick, just like you'd see in like a steering column or something like that. So they don't require grease, but they are very, very slidey, as I'd call it. Got the little spiral rings here that hold them in the end of the tube but they're probably not going to go anywhere as you can see we've welded this up this is actual tubing that hammer concepts provides this is molly tubing and we actually have some more pieces that uh, we could throw in here we use some pieces of our own just for our design purposes but he gives you a bunch of options as far as the molly tubing to build whatever design you need. So here we have our 70, 75 inch and three eighths quarter wall slide. And one thing on this, the racecraft rear end has a five eighths bolt that's already threaded into the rear end. So we're gonna have to swap this rod in out, which is no big deal but this is what comes with it uh, if you order his kit but very 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 nice also in his kit you got uh, your rod ends for the back side of your wishbone the heater cut off so now you can hear me and the hardware he also provides chassis tabs now these I don't think that they were already welded up. I think Cody and him welded these up because I'm pretty sure they were just loose. But he sends you all this if you buy the uh, wishbone kit, which is very nice. And those will just, those will weld right on a tube, that big tube in the back. And in the back, rod ends will tie right into it so yeah so what i'm going to do now i'm going to probably go ahead and install these bushings now that this thing's cooled off they, they left a little bit ago but you can see inside it is machined out to receive the bushings and not go uh, too far down which i've got to clean that out I've, Hit it with the flapper wheel in there just to get any debris out from where it was welded. But super nice, super heavy duty. Looking forward to uh, getting this thing in the car and just uh, seeing how it performs. So as far as putting the bushings and stuff back in after you're welding it, uh, one thing I'll go ahead and say Pay attention to your tubing warpage. Like where these two copes, where these two uh, ends tie in to this big tube, where you weld that around, it's going to misshape this big tube a little bit. Pay attention to that because remember, if your bushing is tight going in, then it's gonna be tight on the slide. And you don't want that. You wanna, you wanna be able just to push it in with your fingers. So if your tubing is out of round any, you need to take some sandpaper and sand the outside of this bushing a little bit to match the tubing so there's not uh, extra pressure on just a couple points of this bushing. You want even pressure all the way around, that way it puts even pressure on your slide all the way around. So these bushings are held in by spiral rings. And what these look like, they look like a slinky or a sheet metal key ring. You can see right there. So I'll give you a little, I've never messed with these before. They, they look like a snap ring, but the snap of where you grab it would be at the bottom where you couldn't get to it with pliers. So it's, it's a snap ring, a spiral, a spiral snap ring is what it is. So your bushing here, now this bushing I've already sanded just a little bit, just uh, so it'll go in smooth for the video but 
when you put it in, you should get it lined up there and it's pushing it in. Should take no more effort than just your fingers like that. You shouldn't have to hammer it. You shouldn't have to put grease or Vaseline or whatever else on it. You shouldn't have to do any of that. It should just drop right in. So once it's in, push it all the way down to where it stops, where it's machined out. Then you got your spiral ring. So what you want to do with that is start on the bottom side where it ends. You want to put one of those ends in the groove. So once it's in the groove, take your other finger and kind of hold it there. See how I'm doing that? You can see it. Hold it in the groove, then twist it where it makes the loop smaller. This will allow it to drop down in the groove all the way around, uh, or almost all the way around until it gets to your finger. Then you'll have to get your finger out of the way and keep working it around until you eventually have the whole ring inside the groove and then you'll hear it snap like that. And there you have it. It is in the groove holding the bushing in where it can't come out. So now that we got our bushings front and rear of the wishbone installed, we're gonna drop the slide in there and make sure it does what it's supposed to. I'd say we're good to go. So again, I'll show you on the table here, really effortlessly slides in and out, actually a lot more freely than one that you would see with grease in it. Now the grease, the grease serves a, a good purpose because if you have any slop in this, the grease can tighten that up a little bit. Well, there is zero slop in this side to side. You can see that. Like, there is none. So your typical wishbone is gonna have just a little bit of play right there, which is fine, but if you can get that out, it's better. And this has zero side to side play in it which is a big improvement over a normal greasable style uh, wishbone. Plus you don't have to mess with carrying a grease gun to the track and messing with something nasty on your car like that. Uh, so definitely check this out, this wishbone kit from Hammer Concepts and Designs. Uh, we'll come in here tomorrow and get the chassis tabs on the car, get everything mocked up and we'll show you what the finished product looks like uh, with everything. And of course, we'll have to get another rod in, but I mean, you'll get the idea with the mock-up, how it's gonna look and everything, and we'll finish out this video. So uh, we'll see you then. So here we are the next day, and we've got the wishbone installed, so let's check it out. Have to bear with the light here, because trying to get it where you can see. in the way again so you see our chassis tabs here we've got them welded all the way around nice and beefy got this thing in place where we want it no we don't have any misalignment spacers in here yet we have some ordered that are uh, beveled at the end or tapered I guess you'd say the ones that we made for it were straight but really needs to have tapered ones to where it'll give it the full range of motion uh, with these rod ends so definitely a beefy piece I highly recommend if you're looking for a wishbone setup you check out hammer concepts and designs LLC I will put the link get out of this light Hang on. it's annoying I'll put the link to his website below where you can go check out some of the stuff that he offers. And uh, 
like I said, get yourself a kit. Comes with everything you need, your rod ends, the whole nine yards. Like I said, we're gonna have to switch this rod in on the end, because this is a 5 8 bolt that was in this race craft rear end, and we're not gonna change <coughs> what's on the rear end. It's easier just to change the rod end to adapt to the bolt size, so that's what we're gonna do. But, uh, the wishbone setup is definitely the easiest to deal with. You've got wishbone, diagonal, and then you've got what is basically a swing arm with an X-brace in between it or something. And uh, the wishbone, that's what most people go to, but it also has the most uh, slop, or that's what uh, everybody thinks until you use this wishbone here, because there is no there is no slop side to side at all in this thing. Even with something that's got, uh, where you can pump grease in it, it still doesn't tighten up as tight as this does and move as freely as this does. So, uh, I think this was definitely the best choice to go with on this car. And I'm excited to see uh, what kind of improvements or how the car uh, feels a lot better with the wishbone versus the panhard bar making the rear end swing side to side as it separates so much going down the track. So hopefully this will help Jonathan go even faster, which is the goal. One more thing on the tabs, they are going slightly downhill. And this is because if you'll look, the wishbone is going downhill whenever it's separated like this. So you want your tabs to be going a little bit in the direction of the wishbone because if you have them completely level, then you're really relying on you having enough misalignment availability on your rod end to not put it in a bind. You don't want to put it in a bind or risk bending the tab or, or bending the end of the rod end uh, more importantly. So, just uh, think about all that when you're doing the wishbone and uh, just plan it out good and other than that it's pretty simple but really happy with the way it turned out I can quit hitting my head so a couple more things that we did today is we cut the loop that ties the two Projack bars together we cut that out where the torque arm now is allowed to move as far down as it needs to he's got a couple more hole adjustments on his coil over so he can separate even further if he needs to we also did uprights right there and you can see the other one over there going to the roll cage to support the car whenever they jack it up on the pro jacks they won't try to bend those things so tomorrow we're gonna come in, we're gonna cut all these useless brackets off. We're gonna cut this huge bracket off where the panhard bar used to go. We're gonna cut these bumps out of the wheel well for a little bit more tire clearance. And we're gonna start addressing the anti-roll bar end links, which will attach somewhere in here off the frame rails. We also have some adjustable lower control arm boxes that are going to weld up in the front and i'll be telling you a little bit more about those in the future matt from tick uh, actually came by here this is something that he has designed uh for his own personal car which is a third gen camaro and uh we're gonna incorporate it into grub worm since uh, the underside of these chassis are pretty much the same they'll work the same for the fourth gen so we're gonna be cutting those in and I'll, I'll probably say something about that on the next video because it'll be on the next video's update. So that's gonna give us a lot more adjustment up front because with the car being lowered down, the lower control arm bar angle is gonna have to go up in the car even further than what it is now or it basically defeats the purpose of lowering the car because you lose your bar angle. So lot going on we're trying to get all this chassis stuff wrapped up so we can get the car down and we can get the turbo stuff done uh we got our stainless the rest of the stainless in yesterday 
You can see we got most of it from Profab, which are local to us. And the rest of it come from Ace Race, which always has quality stuff. But like I said, 321 stainless, not a whole lot of people keep that in stock. So we had to split the sources up there. So that's your uh, update. And this is your video on the wishbone install. I uh, hope you'll go check out Hammer Concepts and Designs and uh, let them guys know that you've seen it on Rock Solid Motorsports YouTube channel. So see you guys next time.